Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an environment to run the Kotlin language and this will prepare you to go through some of the tutorials that are coming. So this is a series for learning how to program mobile applications using the Kotlin language. So in this first section of the course we're going to be dealing with the regular um, language of Kotlin and so you have to learn how to program in the syntax before you can actually build some apps. So this video here is one of many in the Kotlin series. So the goal here is to have Hello World working by the end of the video. And so I'm going to show you how to set up the Kotlin environment that will let you do command line uh, console only type programming. And we'll get to the uh, application development later. But just to learn the Kotlin language, we're going to stick with the console apps. So the best solution for this, the easiest one to configure, is from IntelliJ. So you can see I've got a Windows environment set up in front of me here and uh, it doesn't have any Java installed yet. It doesn't have the Kotlin IDE yet and so we're going to go through all the steps and maybe catch some of the gotchas so that way when you're done you'll have a fully functioning environment where you can go through the tutorials. So let's get to the uh, screen here in front of us. So you can see that I'm using uh, a search IntelliJ Kotlin IDE. So if you didn't know that that's what you're supposed to search for, you would probably not get here. So IDE is the Integrated Development Environment. That's what IDE stands for. And uh, IntelliJ is the one we're looking for. So here we go. JetBrains is the link. And let's see what we have for our options. So you can see it's bringing us to a page where we uh, looks like we have to close this. And uh, you can see all the different versions of IntelliJ uh, show up here. So this current version is 2023 version 2, and let's choose the big blue button. Okay, so we get to the download link, and the first thing you see is pricing. What I'm interested in is uh, individual use, and I don't want to buy this. So look at all these prices. Uh, where's the free version? That's what I'm looking for. So let's try some free searching. So I'm going to keep searching special offers. Well, here we go. Students and teachers. Uh, this is nice. Classroom assistants, open source projects, universities. This to me looks like uh, we've got ourselves uh, a little bit better option. So let's go to the uh, students and teachers or classroom assistants. Let's try that and see what comes up. Free educational licenses. This looks like it fits us. What do we do? Is there somewhere we have to apply for it? So use your email address. It looks like I'm a student. In this case, I'm a teacher. Put in your address and register. Okay, so I went through the registration process and I had to put in my password, create an account. And so you have to do all that before you can get to this page where it says, please download. So you can see there's a Windows and a Mac version. So I'm going to install the Windows version because that's what I'm running right now. And strangely enough, I have a ARM 64 version of Windows. So you will not use this likely because, as you can, you might be able to tell, I'm running on a Macintosh. But anyway, it should be identical to your Intel processor, which most Windows computers have. Okay, so let's check in on the downloads. I'm going to go to my folders and look for downloads. And sure enough, I have a complete installation package. So I'm going to double click it, run it, and do the installation like you would expect. And let's see if there's any problems with that. So in the installation options, it looks like we have a couple options that we might want to choose. So let's create a desktop icon. And uh, this one here says, add this to your path, which could be a way to launch Kotlin and the IDE without having uh, further confusion. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in there. A second option that I'm going to choose is this KT extension. So uh, you can obviously see that if you're programming in Java, you're going to have a Java extension. But KT stands for Kotlin, so I'll, I'll choose that one. And let's put this in the JetBrains container, and let's see how this goes. So you can see I've got my IntelliJ in installation icon on the desktop already, and I'll wait for the rest of it now. While this is installing, let's take a look at some of the files. Uh, you notice it's installing a bunch of jar files, which are Java Archive. So you're going to notice right away that when you're programming in Kotlin, you're really programming in Java with a different syntax because the code in Kotlin is interchangeable with code that runs in Java. So we're going to actually have to have the Java runtime on our computer to make this work. 
And as you can see, it looks to me like the IntelliJ IDE was built in the Java language, which is why it's installing all these jar files. Just my guess. Okay, it looks like I'm finally finished here. Uh, do you want to reboot now or later? I'll, I'll try it later and see if it'll actually run. So we're going to test a few things out. First of all, let's go to the command line. So I'm going to type CMD, which gives us the command prompt. And what I want to do is find out if Java is on my computer. So I'm going to type in the word Java hyphen hyphen version. And uh, it says it doesn't recognize it. So my guess is that Java has not been installed on this machine, which could be a problem. Let's see if it'll run the program. So I'm going to double click on the IntelliJ and see if I can do a hello world without installing Java first. I'll agree to whatever you told me and continue. And I don't want to give you data. Okay, it looks like I'm presented with some registration or start the trial. Let's see if we can log in with my account. Okay, so here we go. I've got my account. I'm going to log in and see if that will be enough to make my app run. It looks to me like it is. So I'm going to allow access to make this thing go. And let's save it. And it says you can close this and return to the IDE. Well, let's see how the IDE is functioning. There it is. Okay, so activate. And let's see. It's good until 2024. It's for educational use only. And let's continue. Hooray, we're running. So now let's make our new project and let's see if this will run. So I'm going to call this thing hello. And you can see that the uh, problem is that I don't have Java installed. So in this line called JDK, I've got a red error. It says nothing there. So fortunately, I don't have to go find the uh, Java runtime kit and I can just use it right here. So let's try this. Download JDK and let's see what happens. So you can see that the uh, version number is presented to you. So it looks to me like 20 is the current. We can choose the Oracle Open JDK, which is by default the one that I usually use with my students. And then this is the location. So let's give it a try using the defaults. OK, it looks like it's finished. So now I have a JDK installed. Let's just try the same experiment here. So I'm going to type in CMD. And this time when I type in Java hyphen hyphen version, do I get anything? Still nothing. So maybe the path variable has not been set yet, or maybe I have to restart the computer. But uh, generally speaking, Windows doesn't uh, is not aware of where Java has been installed. But maybe the um, IDE that I've installed already knows that. So this may or may not be a problem. Let's close that and keep going. So location now. So what, what are we doing here? So this is like the users directory. Let's let's pick a different folder here. So you can see that users public Shad Sluter is there. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, Shad Sluter and let's go to the uh, documents folder. And let's make a, maybe a new one. So let's go to here and I'm going to call this thing Kotlin Projects. So you can def you can define your location of anything you want. So right there you can see I'm in the documents folder, Kotlin projects now. And uh, if you want to use Git for saving your things online, you can check mark that, but we don't need to do that. I'm going to se select the language to Kotlin. So if I see that it says no SDKs, what did I just install? Let's see. That was a Java development kit and what I want is a software development kit. So there's a slight difference. Uh, let's try this again then. So let's go ahead and add an SDK. What are the choices? I'm going to download it. And uh, let's see. It looks to me like it's the same thing. Uh, okay, let's try it again then. Looks to me like it didn't have to download it a second time, which is good. So now we have a build system question. So IntelliJ, Maven, and Gradle are my options. So uh, we're going to be using Gradle when it comes to Android development. So I'm just going to pick that for now. It's actually not going to impact our projects much. But uh, let's see if we can run with Gradle. OK, so I'm downloading. Uh, we're not really downloading. I'm just configuring these. And uh, we, I think we're ready to run now. So add sample code is, a, is an important thing because that will create some files for us that we can run with. And let's see, there's some advanced settings. Uh, it doesn't look like I can get down there, so I'm just going to choose Create. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, great. It says uh, you can use versions 1.8 through 19. Would you like to proceed with 20 and Gradle 8.2? Let's try that. All right, so apparently it likes the new version of Gradle, and you can see that down at the bottom, there is this process going on. It says downloading a bunch of stuff with the jar files. So when you install a project with a dependency manager, it automatically downloads a whole lot of things for you and installs them. And you can see a bunch of folders over here on the left. If I were to try to run this program now, you can see that the uh, run button is a gray triangle, which means it's not ready yet. So be patient and wait for all of this stuff to download, especially on the first time. This takes a little while. Okay, finally, it looks like we're finished. So as soon as I see the results, I can run this uh, green triangle here, or you can see there's an entry point where I can run the function called main. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to run the program. And what I'm looking for is a console window that should print a few things. It should say hello world and then print something else called program arguments. So let's see where that might pop out. Right now it's in the process called build, which means it's compiling it and setting it up to run on my machine. So that way it can actually do something useful. Okay, finally, it looks like it's finished here. And you can see down in the area that just popped open, this is called the console. And so the hello world message appeared and then the program arguments, which is blank also appeared. So you can see hello world is the string here. So you can put anything you want in there and you can put in your name, for example, and rerun the program. And let's see if instead of hello world, we get hi shad. And sure enough, there it is. So if you want to see a little bit bigger window, you can size this up or down. And the message here is the key ingredient to see that your program is running successfully. Now you can see that it is using this uh, Java runtime, Java EXE, from this location. So I don't believe that Windows in general knows where this is, but obviously the Kotlin IDE actually uses it. So in this environment, I am successfully compiling and running Kotlin code on my computer. Now for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the language of Kotlin. So we're going to go through and explore some of the features to make uh, very simple applications at first and then more complex to get all of the things ready for building mobile apps. And so mobile applications is the goal for what most people these days are using Kotlin for. However, it's not the only purpose. You can build entire websites, essentially anywhere that you use Java you can swap out the language of Java with Kotlin and you'll get a success. So I guess that's another subject is why Kotlin then? Why would we use Kotlin? Well, there's a long story behind it and maybe that's good for another video. So don't forget to subscribe so that way you don't miss some of these upcoming lessons. There's going to be a lot of information to help you become a software developer. Thanks for joining me.